man. Can't wait to do his show. All fuck right, up. everybody. Oh, no, so fucked up. I'm hold up, hold up, hold up. This. No, I don't give a shit about the intro. I'm sorry. No, nah, I'm going to intro. Come on, come on. No, fuck the intro. Listen, we're going to fucking... <laughs> this intro. should be the intro. Yeah. I don't, you, know what, intro. you know what? You fucking do it because your name's on the show, so you yeah. know. Welcome to the Red Phillips Show, everybody. Uh, this is me, you know, Red Phillip or Nick Gway. And I um, want the fucking, I want this and, argument in the intro of the show because it's better than oh, a yeah, regular definitely. intro. Well, we will have that in there. Um, also, Chris <laughs> Crake or Thor or Hey, what's uh, up, everyone? Doctor hey! Octopus, as he likes to be referred to. Um, we also in the house we got Mark Nabong. Um, What's up, guys? We actually know nothing about you, so I can't do kind of an intro for you. I said, Mark, send us some shit that you've done. I <laughs> emailed your ass, and I said, what email should I send it to? It's a big ass file. All right, you know what? Shit. I I I never check my fucking. <laughs> oh I never shit! My spam and it might be in there. <laughs> Oh shit! I never Whoa. checked the spam. I have Gmail. I don't need well, to. I I, uh, I was I wasn't able to get to YouTube because I was at work, so I couldn't like look up the YouTube videos. But if you Google me on or whatever YouTube search, you'll find I my. I do that. I was like, right, you on. know what? Let's, you let's know what? It's all video, good. Then let's play a little video. What? what yeah, like, you <laughs> type in your name or what? Mark Nabong? <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I'll right. look too. I love how unprofessional this show is. It's just yeah, great. Yeah, it's you know we come in here and we wing it. <laughs> if it, was, if it was... All right, um, Mark, right. Mark, you got a um, you got a choice here. There's a bunch of shit. I'm thinking of playing your little uh, 55 second clip. It says edge comedy. Yeah, play that. All right, edge all right. comedy. <laughs> the edge. <laughs> Yeah, as the boy said, isn't it? Like I pretty much just stand there staring at the audience for like a minute and a half. Like it's weird. It's some Andy Kaufman shit. <laughs> you know what we should do? We should just go back while that's low. We should just go back and have that argument about the intro. All right, all right. Well, you, yeah, you talk about <laughs> Yeah, all right, Mark. You know, let us like, – what, what All right, here, here, here. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. All right. Uh, so let you us know. You don't crap about me. So as far as you know, I could just make up crap right now. Yes. And you'd have no way of calling Okay, everybody. Uh, Mark Nabong, the uh, the next uh, president of the United States, uh, in the house. How's it going, y'all? <laughs> you know, that deserves the a... only person known to have invented a time machine, go back in time, kill himself, but then his future self became the president of the United States. You know what sucks about uh, going back in time and killing yourself? What? Like it's done, and you get this shame, this like shame that watches over you, like you know, like you were, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, like How do you get you're shame caught... for killing yourself back in time. Yeah. What if, what if the old you was a fucking asshole, and like the new you is like, I want to just kill this motherfucker, Jesus. Yep. But that's what you do. You go back, you're like, I'm gonna get that guy, and then it happens, and you've got regret. It's like you broke up with a crazy woman. You know, like you break up with her, and you know she's crazy. You know she's crazy. You took five shots of whiskey to break up with her so you could deal with the crazy. And then, like, the next day, you're hungover, and you're like, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And, like, you're like, what? I totally should have done that. There's no reason I should not have done that. Mark, Mark Nabong's next comedy album is going to be called uh, Shots of Whiskey and Going Back in Time with a Whiskey Whiskey and Breakups? No, no, whiskey, whiskey. Is that your breakups. country album? No, 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 whiskey breakups, time travel. That's what it's going on. <laughs> whiskey breakups. <laughs> oh shit! All right, so you know what? Uh, How about yeah. a whiskey shot in the dark? A whiskey shot in the dark. <laughs> all right, all right. Listen, all joking aside. Um, With the fucking DeLorean, <laughs> at 80 miles per hour, and that fucking hovering. That hovering, <laughs> hovering skateboard shit from that fucking stupid movie. God damn. Did, did um, you know that DeLoreans were made in Ireland? What? They were made in Canada. Were they made, were they made in Canada? I thought they were made in Ireland. No. I saw one of those, man, like, like, literally two months ago, and I was like, I, I, I wanted to fucking steal it because I really want to know what if there was just, just hypothetically, what if there was one actual DeLorean? That if you went 88 miles per hour, you go back in time. You know what would be crazy? Right? You just hop in it by accident. What, and what there if there was never more than one DeLorean? What if this is the same DeLorean, and when you see like five at once, that's the same DeLorean that has come back in time five times. You know what that fucking movie is? 
That that's, movie never did. Hang out with itself. The, the DeLorean movie, got lonely. Wait, wait. <laughs> that movie never said what would happen if the DeLorean got in a car accident right when it fucking uh, hit 88 miles per hour. That's true. Um, you know what would happen? What if that happened? What if that happened and the insurance investigator sent to uh, to investigate it? Was fucking Tyler Durden from Fight Club, and what? That's why that shit went down. <laughs> he had to go back in time, because the no, because the front half of the car accident would have happened back in time. Man, I don't know and where the, back, the latter half of the car would be fucking in the present still. I, you know what? If we're gonna have this conversation, I'm gonna drink. So where's my? I got. You know what? <laughs> that, that's you that's you guys a good in Canada. Call. You guys in Canada. So I'm gonna pour myself some Crown Royale in your honor. I'm pouring some Crown Royale here. That's Just that's a good uh, good call. Um, <laughs> se- separate company. All right, hold on. I'm looking this up here. Uh, the DeLorean was made by a guy who was born in Liverpool. Um, but the current DeLorean Motor Company is located near Houston. What? So I don't that know sucks. what the fuck that means. Wikipedia is very vague. Um, I think they went back in time and changed the Wikipedia um, information. No, here it is. Here it is. All right, it was it was founded in in Detroit. Oh, <laughs> might as well. Be so we were all off. Oh wait, wait, wait! But it says, it says here. I'm looking at Wikipedia too. It says headquarters Detroit, Michigan, U.S. Dunmurry, Northern Ireland. Where's Jesus. That? You, you ah, know, I want to say something about Detroit right now. It's just like Detroit. Detroit's gonna be um, what New York City was in Escape from New York. Like they're just gonna do that. They're gonna fucking make a moat around Detroit and make it a big prison. Just because think about it, Detroit is so broke right now that they had to change what Detroit actually was legally to make it smaller. Like they brought right. the the borders of the city, and so they didn't have to take care of the fucking poor neighborhoods. Jesus like, Christ. Detroit, Detroit's going to be escaped from New York. I'm not even kidding. What? So, You've so, done that? You've done that? Have you ever, have you ever, like, have you ever lived in a house? Like, I lived in a house once with, like, eight people, and at some point, we all just gave up on the basement. We're like, you know what? The basement, <laughs> the basement, that is Mad Max down there. Like, we're not going <laughs> to. Like, anything that goes down there stays down there. This is not a joke. The basement was so disgusting. Uh, the the company that rented us the house, they went to they came to fix the dryer. They never sealed the hole around the dryer vent, and uh, so there's this big hole to the outside, which is all right. Except this is in Michigan, right? There's this big hole to the outside. My uh, my roommate's cat goes into heat. Suddenly, we've got like six or seven tomcats in the basement of the house, like just walking around going. Rah! So you Jesus. wouldn't, and you wouldn't, and there was you couldn't close the bathroom door, right? So everyone's like, all right, the dudes will go to the bathroom downstairs. So you would be down there, you're like taking a dump, and there'd be like tomcats like walking around you. What are you gonna do? You're sitting there taking a dump. There's nothing you can do. You had the you're just cat rubbing up against your leg. Your fucking basement, your Mad Max fucking basement. <laughs> you, you you'd go down. Like, Two I'd go cats down enter. One cat leaves. Two cats enter. One cat leaves. <laughs> Oh my god, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. Also, if they had dog fun, you guys had fucking cats in your ghetto basement. That would be. A, you know what? I would watch that. If you had a one-on-one cat fight where you put two cats in a ring and you put aluminum foil on all their feet so the cats would be freaking out, oh, like, yeah. I would watch that. No, but yeah. you have to put rubber bands on the cats and make them jump around the Thunderdome fucking thing. So it was well, like I actually, I, I had an idea for a TV show that I would actually watch. I'd put it on Discovery if I could get it done. It, it, it would be just animal versus animal. You know, like a, like what would happen if a gorilla fought like a giraffe? You know, uh, PETA would come and they'd fucking. Kill him. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wait, 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 wait. Let's talk about this. Who would win in a fight, a gorilla or a giraffe? I'm gonna have to give it to the gorilla. Of course, the gorilla. Course. Gorilla is so what? strong. It would. It's just like you gotta look at this. A gorilla is just like. A little wrestler, and he's just gonna take a giraffe down and, and right. fucking choke but, him out. But a giraffe is just like a giant golf club. <laughs> have you well, ever exactly. seen? 
Have you ever yeah. seen a giraffe just smack something with its head? Yeah, it's but here's crazy. the thing. Here's the thing. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I figured out why the gorilla wins. Here's why. Why? Because a gorilla is kind of bipedal. They can move on two feet. For a giraffe to turn to, you know, cut it's, off... It's four the, feet. That's it, right. It's going to lose. If it's... The faster fighter is probably going to win. That's why a lot of people think, like, being bigger in a fight is a big advantage. It's that's, not that's because that's the smaller true. faster is almost always faster. Now, here's the thing. A giraffe with four fucking legs could cut off the corners of the ring, put right. the gorilla in a corner, make the gorilla... But the gorilla could fight its fucking way up. If well, the gorilla, see, the gorilla could just climb up the giraffe. Just climb exactly. straight up, oh, and, the, and it's over. The giraffe's got the reach, though. Like, have you ever seen... Like, when you, I don't know if you can do it now, but at some point, find a YouTube video of giraffes fighting. It is the weirdest... Thing it's like you, watching it's like watching the two like gamma males from high school like the two guys that no one really dug it's like watching them <laughs> fight like, <laughs> like find it it's like, like it's like it's like, it's like watching it's like watching uh, a nerd kid fight the gay kid it's just it's these not even on All the right. it's the undercard <laughs> all right here we go most violent draft fight ever this is gonna be interesting oh shit Ho hopefully. Maybe the He's, so they're looking this up. You put out your hand in. Oh, shit! Oh! <laughs> from the Discovery Channel shows two giraffes using their six-foot-long necks as weapons to go after each other. ABC's Paula Ferris. What the story. fuck? Huge claws, sharp teeth. Okay, I don't give a shit about what she has to say. Okay. <laughs> here's the thing, here's the thing. Um, I just noticed about that? Like, she's like, she's like, like, she has to sell... The giraffe fight. Like you, you don't have, have to. You don't need the. You don't need an intro. Just show the giraffes fighting. Yeah. 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 yeah exactly. What you? How do you? I mean, how do you even try to sell that? Like the balls on her. It's be like if, if Muhammad Ali fought Mike Tyson as prime. You don't have to sell it. It sells itself. People want to watch it. Yeah. Like I'm thinking pay per view here. I'm thinking fuck the UFC. Okay. I think we can beat them. Yeah. yeah, that's why that's why Don King was kind of a genius because he didn't even need to sell like Foreman Ali. He was just like, you know what? I don't have to sell this. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a concert that you'll have to go to to watch this fight. Like that's how. <laughs> like he didn't nice. try to sell it. He crammed other stuff in there that you have to buy. Oh yeah. fuck yeah. Yeah, it's like it's like you want oh you want oh you want Maple Leafs tickets? You gotta buy fucking Blue Jays tickets too. <laughs> you got a you right. got, nice Canadian references, by the way, Mark. <laughs> you, you have to buy the blue. No, you have to buy the Blue Jays tickets. Ne this point in the season, when you know that they fucking suck, after they bought everyone, not like the before when you thought like, well, you have to buy them. Now you know that they're shit. All right, all right. So the rule is, if you want to see the giraffe and the gorilla fight, you got to buy the rhino um, skin first. That's right. No, no. You know, if you want to see the giraffe gorilla fight, you got to buy the fucking Plankton versus a whale's mouth fight. That's what you got to fucking buy. <laughs> you want to watch the fight, giraffe you and the gorilla watch. fight? You have to watch Nick and Chris play drunk, like drunken Scrabble. Oh, oh that'd be. Oh, I think I whooped my ass. I, I know more words than he does. I think I. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. I, I, I could pull some <laughs> long words out of my ass. All right, all right, fine, fine. What we do you mean? Make... Uh, isn't a word. That's totally a word. <laughs> Alright, look, we gotta make an undercard for this. Okay, so far, so far we have Plankton versus a whale's mouth. We have us playing Scrabble drunk. What else is on the undercard? We gotta have like three or four fights. Um, alright, alright. We'll play, we'll put Cutest Kitten on YouTube versus uh, Steel Toe Boot from a drunken My Brother. <laughs> that would just be like, uh, if, like, well, when Vanderlei Silva used to fight just those tomato cans in Japan, those fucking right. fake wrestlers they brought in just so he'd knock them the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I would pay to see? I would pay to see Robin Thicke, Alan Thicke's real son, fight Kirk Cameron, Alan Thicke's fake TV son. I would pay to see that. that Robert Thicke, that fucking... Isn't he that guy who was in that Marley Cyrus shit? Wasn't that him? Was that yeah, Marley? that's him. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, think about this. I don't know about the rest of the card... But our co-main event, fucking Miley Cyrus's foam finger versus Robin Thicke's asshole. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's a foam finger. Yeah, How I mean, win. 
you know how hard it is to cram a foam finger of someone's ass? Uh, that, that's going to be an interesting thing to see. And uh, even I, if it wins, even if it wins, like, it's all brown afterwards. Like, that, that is a pyrrhic victory. Like, that is not something you want to win, you know? <laughs> no, but it would be entertaining. It, it, it would be it entertaining. Would be entertaining. Um, There's a line from Mark Twain. Never argue with stupid people because they drag you down to their level and then they beat you with experience. So, oh, yeah. Oh, wow, that's good. Is that good? Our, that's good. I like that. Um, I've, got, I've got our co-main event. I figured out our co-main event. Okay. All right, what's the co-main? The co-main event, Miley Cyrus. She's fighting two fights in one night. <laughs> <laughs> Miley Cyrus versus Lady Gaga, the two... The, the eccentric, crazy, rich bitch versus... The drop in M and mixing it with Coke so she goes fucking crazy and humps people there, with her what, goddamn. How is that a qu- like Lady Gaga would win that every day of the week. Yeah, but here's the thing, we're not drug testing, so I, I got a good one. I, 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 got, I, got, I got a good one. Wants. I got a good one. Alright, here. Here's the deal. It's a twerk off between <laughs> Miley Cyrus and Beyonce. <laughs> <laughs> what the f- yeah, I don't so think he that's- judges that. Uh, 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 Bono. We, but we need three judges. Yeah. You can't just have one judge. Just well, all right. Uh, Bono, uh, dead John Lennon's skeleton, and <laughs> um, and uh, Obama. Oh, well, okay. Actually, right, where about John Lennon is a good question. So, it, it, in, in a fight, in a fight. John Lennon or Mick Jagger, uh, live John Lennon. In a fight, John Lennon or John Mick Lennon. Jagger. John Lennon used to beat up bitches all the time, and uh, Mick Jagger is just the size of a bitch. Yeah, but Mick Jagger's crazy. Yeah, I, well, I haven't heard any fighting stories. You heard any fighting stories of his? There's a song about him. They got the moves like Jagger. Like, wait, that's for that's about fighting. Man, no. he might. He, he, I thought it was, yeah, that was dancing, right? <laughs> yeah. But okay. Look, didn't Muhammad Ali study? Ballet, so we can learn how to like have good because footwork's like the most important thing of a fight. So maybe Mick Jagger, he maybe we give Mike J- Mick Jagger like a week of boxing lessons. And he figures out. How to do this. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I mean, but I mean, I I think John Lennon wasn't just a woman beater. He he went into bar fights and shit. Like apparently the Beatles were actually rough kids from the rough part of London. Here, here's my yeah. problem with this though, because if we're putting this whole fight card on. I think it's gonna be too expensive to bring, make a machine to bring John Lennon back from the we dead. We already have a time machine. Machine, so. Yeah, we already got, got the DeLorean. Oh, okay, okay, all right. <laughs> if we're if we're continuing in this uh, ridiculous world of ours, uh, okay, so we, we got, we got everything we need. Yeah, we can definitely. All right, we, we can definitely get him there. That's all right. You know what? I think people just seeing John Lennon back now. I think we could probably we'd have to do like Cowboy Stadium, like a hundred and five thousand yeah. seats. We we need a football or a baseball stadium. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. Um, I remember reading once that like uh, uh, Vince Neil, the lead singer of Motley Crue. I'm, I'm, I think I'm older than you guys. I'm old. Uh, Vince Neil, <laughs> lead singer of Motley Crue, uh, had a feud with Axl Rose, where like Axl said, "The moment I see you, I'm gonna kick your ass." And uh, and Vince Neil was like, "Bring it!" And everyone in the band was like, "What are you talking? Axl's gonna kill you. He's crazy. He'll murder you." So, like, the rest of the band had to work to make sure they never ran into each other. All right. I, think a lot I, I, got, I got the video. There's, there's, there's a video for it. Give it a, give a second. Um, it, well, it's their verbal fight. Oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. Who is this? This is Vince Neil versus Axel Rose. Here we go. Shut the... Wow. 1989 MTV Video Music Awards. When Vince allegedly took a swing at GNR guitarist, he's a traveling. For making passes at his wife. It was between us, had nothing to do with Axel. He's a rock. He's like, that guy, you know, had a full on green shot. He looks like your fucking sister, you know. Nick. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is that good for Nick's sister or? I used to fight him outside Tower Records after the award show. The Headbangers Brawl never took place. I don't know, I just meant that guy, that guy does look like a picture I've seen of her. Then same, got, same hair. Axel, you're watching this. I want to challenge you to a fight. Oh so, shit! It's time to rock and roll. The odds makers had Axel a heavy favorite. And his power. Yeah. And with his ability to send Vince up against the ropes, would be just too much. I, I like. 
Actually, TKO. Oh, right. shit. Preview. The pipe surrounding the fight grew larger. The hatred between the two men grew increasingly passionate. Let's do it. Like men should do it. Ultimately, Rose and Neil could not bring themselves... Did he say that the hatred with became passionate? Ended with <laughs> a blow. Like what, like they fight and then they start making out? Yeah, I think by pound he meant uh, anal rape. Um, anyway, I can't believe they're taking it so seriously. You know, they're like, fucking I, singers. They don't know anything about fighting. Yeah, the one guy's like, oh, well, uh, you know, he'd put him up against the ropes, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't put my five grand that I usually put up on fights, I would not put it on Vince Neal. That's Marv Albert. That's the dickhead who does all those ESPN announcings and shit. Yeah. Like, like, there's no lead singer who could who could kick ass. Well, like, Glenn Danzig. Like, Glenn Danzig is, like, it. Like... Yeah, I, I, I guess. I mean, you know, sure. what I, you know what I heard? I heard that Fifty Cent challenged Floyd Mayweather to a fucking fight. That's yeah, what I there's Fifty Cent. I was just trying to think of who could, and I think Fifty Cent could kick some ass. Oh yeah, you know. Um, I, <laughs> trivia. I heard so Fifty Cent. He sells millions of records, right? Yeah. He made more money off what is that vitamin water? Yeah, yeah. Fiji. Was that? Fiji water. Yeah, or whatever it is. He did it. He did an ad for them, and they gave him like stock in the company, and he made more money off that. Yeah, man. The guy. I, I'm pretty sure he owns the company. I, I I heard that he owned the company. Is that right? And yeah, I think he sold it or it has made so far a uh, billion dollars. What one billion? Get out. I'm not kidding. Hey, oh, you, yo, yo, check this out. Actually, I've I've got a better co-main event. Okay. Better one. All right. What do you got? We're going to take Kimbo Slice. Uh-oh. Kimbo Slice. Yes. And Kimbo... Versus Mark? Well... <laughs> versus me? Yeah. Like, I couldn't, even, I couldn't even beat Kimbo Slice in, like, a hot dog eating contest. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Okay, here's what's going to happen. First round of the fight, if it goes past first round. First round of the fight will be, like, MMA rules. Second round of the fight will be... A hot dog eating contest, and the third, <laughs> the third round of the fight will be um, a twerk off. <laughs> <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like a hillbilly's triathlon. You gave, you gave me no choice. You gave me no chance here. If you had said the third one would be like a game of Magic the Gathering, then like maybe I had a shot. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Okay, a game of Monopoly. The game third, of... <laughs> third round of the fight will be a game of Pokemon. <laughs> bringing it back, man. <laughs> Bring it right, way back. Are, are we talking video games here or like cards? Like no, no, no I'm, t I'm talking about video games, like with the Game Boys and shit. Yes. yes. Ah, yes. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, you know, let's move on. Um, <laughs> you got an agenda? You got an agenda there? A little I, I, bit. Well, I've got stuff I want to cover on. today. We got a lot to talk about. I mean, we could go right into that if that's what you would want to talk. I, you know, what? let's fucking get into that. Now. Uh, for those who are listening, those uh, five of you who listen to this show, um, what's up, both of y'all? <laughs> uh, recently, we got into a bit of a uh, what do we call it? A heated debate. Uh, twerk off. <laughs> you didn't um, twerk off. <laughs> yeah, on Facebook about um, certain things. Uh, I mean, we we all remember the Lindy West and. I don't even Jim remember Martin. what the fuck was said. I don't even remember. But, <laughs> Wait, between you two or Lindy West? No, any of it. To be honest, with you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, well, I'll bring it, I'll bring it up in a second and remind you. Um, all right, you know, let, let, we got to go a little way back to remind people I think of this. You were on TV back. at some point. I think I um, right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lindy West and Jim Norton went on the uh, I don't know. It's like the Kamaja Bull uh, show, or I don't know the name of the song. Right. Anyway. Um. On there, they had a debate about rape jokes and uh, the comedian's right to do them. And uh, people started Twittering afterwards, and I got in on it just to get our name out there, I guess, and, you know, an opinion. And apparently I made it onto TV with what I said. Um, uh, I mentioned that um, that it, it should definitely be allowed, and um, it just like the TV likes to do, it, it was taken out of, uh, a little bit out of context. Because um, there was a lot. Of money. Yeah, that, that's, that's why I hate TV, man. Like, yeah, 
it, you never get to you know explain anything. Right. There, it, it wasn't really a big deal to me because I um I you know I who, who am I right? But uh they they definitely tried to do that where they showed only a little part of what happened and right. uh uh anyway um. Ian Ellis came on this show. Uh, his episode went up last week, and he he mentioned that we were on TV, so we went and found it. And then uh, Chris saw that he put it up on Facebook and commented on it. And then Mark, Mark, I want to know how you found this. How you? Why did you? Uh, are you friends with Ian Ellis? Yeah. Okay, so you saw that he put it up and uh, decided to just kind of get into this debate with Chris. I mean, yeah. I'm guessing, so I'm, I'm guessing you're either like. Well, you're not an open micer anymore, but like uh, I'm guessing you're both like you probably work in the same club, so you probably run yeah. around the same circles. That, that's where we met. We met. I think we did a show, like you know, we did the same show or something like that. Like, that and sense. it's hard too because you you know when when we talk about can you do this joke, and so <laughs> I'll make this like like my point. And I thought Chris, you had a you had a really good point, which is that anything should be fair game in comedy, right? Like absolutely. What's that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, it should never, it's not about whether some. I believe it's never about some, whether something's funny. It's just we got to have the ability to try. It, it, it's like, you know, we got to have the ability to. to that, whatever right. we're talking about has to be allowed to be open. There's nothing right. that can right. be off and limits because once you start saying something's off limits, then it's a everything's slope. off limits because some, this is, you know, sensitive to one person. <laughs> You know, so well, I, we, I we, agree we, with that. I actually, I actually agree with that. And in fact, I'll even go farther. I'll say that, like, in, if it's done right, like, it's those most sensitive topics, whether it's race or you know politics or you know you know rape jokes or gender issues. Like that, that stuff is great for comedy. It is. But my point is, so at no point do I think someone can be allowed to say it. My point is coming from someone who tries to you know tries to put together my little act. Every week, uh, I think you shouldn't do it uh, if it's something touchy, unless you know for sure that it's good. And so the analogy I make is like if you've got two stuntmen, and okay. one guy's brand spanking new, and okay. one guy's been in the biz ten years. Right. Like, did the brand spanking new guy do the crazy ass Miley Cyrus triple Lutz twerk? <laughs> like, no. All right, but here's here's my uh, uh, if I may retort. Um, please, please do. My thought is, um, <laughs> okay, how are you going to ever know if it's funny if you don't try it? That's like the beauty of freedom of speech is you can try it. And oh, I'm, saying, I'm saying you can do it. Like, you can do a bad joke. There's nothing wrong. Like, I'm right. not going to attach anything you gotta, morally wrong. I mean, that's, that's, that's what comedy is, is you try it, you see if it's funny, and you kind of keep that. If it's funny, you get rid of it if it's not. Yeah. Right, but have you ever like all right? So you guys are you guys are you guys are in Toronto, or at least you some you guys have lived in Toronto at least at some point. Yeah, right. yeah, you're man. In Ontario, really, you know, you guys are in a really diverse area, right? Right. All right. kinds mm -hmm. of people. I like if you ever done a club like in a very very uh, how should I put this uh, dark neighborhood mono, mono ethnic club. Okay. Uh, like oh, you, oh, I I get it. so I I, I know what you're saying. saying. Yeah, like, like either all white people, all black people, or whatever. Yeah, he's, uh, like, he's saying a a, uh, a a stack of crackers is what he's trying yes, to say. Yes, yes. Yeah. A, a right. box of I, premium I plus triscuits. Yes, yes. yes. And okay. so one thing you find is that you go to these clubs. And so I'll, I'll, make this, I'll make this quick. It's, you know, you'll have some guys, and he'll tell a joke, right? Mm -hmm. And he'll tell a joke about, you know, whatever, like Latinos or black people or Asian people. I'm Asian myself. Like he, he tells a joke, and he tells it, and it's clear he doesn't really know anybody in that. He has to run it by them. Now, he's able to do that, and he can screw up. In fact, that's a learn. you know, welcome to the, welcome to the stage, man. Like, it's you'll learn it. it's part about of it. it. Yeah, but I think one thing, one thing that race jokes and, you know, rape jokes, that those kinds of things, they fall into a, a category that when I write for myself, they've got to be there a certain, there's got to be a certain level that you hit in order to do them. So, you know, there's some jokes that you tell just for a <laughs> kind of laugh, and there's some jokes because you want someone to be, like, pissing themselves, and there's some jokes you just want them to sit there and rub their chin and go, that's right, that's right. You can't do, you know, race jokes or rape jokes or, or jokes in that category for just the first. 
Like you can't just do it for a. <laughs> they gotta be laughing their ass I, off. You said. I didn't notice that. I just didn't know how to. He fucking. He just like phrased that so eloquently. Like that. I wish I had said that because that's exactly what I thought. Because I noticed that every, every, like almost all comedians sets have like that to it. They've got levels of the jokes. Right. It's, I've never. See, this is it. This is because here's the thing. Is, I've been around funny, but and I am funny, but I'm not. I'm not funny how you're funny. Because your funny is on a stage. Our funny is this shit. You're radio. You're, you're, you're radio funny. Yeah, exactly. So I don't want to say I, – I was never – I'm not trying to tell a comic how to do their job. Because, no, you no, know, no. It's, it's not my job. My job's a different kind of funny. See, because you guys is a thing. You guys have don't have a safety net. Like, right. our safety net is if we're, if we're bombing and we fucking know when we're bombing, we can instantly just go serious or mean or <laughs> whatever the fuck yeah. we want, and we're fine as long as we're entertaining. You – you have to be funny, or else you're just that guy who's like doing, you know, crowd work, and where you're like, oh yeah, so what do you yeah, do? Yeah, you go oh, if, if you yeah. if you go if you like if you go shitty, you go from shitty to shittier. Yeah. When when we could we could kind of salvage it. It's I don't think you can salvage once you start bombing on stage. Of course, it's I don't really know. Hard man, and one thing you guys have like one thing that I think like the difficult part about radio is there's no silence. Like, you've got to carry that the whole time. Like, whether it's 15 anything. minutes or half an hour or an hour. It's got to be anything going yeah. constantly. You can't stop. Like, you got to take a, you got to take a dump. Like, too bad. Like, you're going, you know. And, and you've got this other guy there, and you've got to be in sync with each other. Because if Nick exactly. goes, Nick goes all, all serious, good night and good luck, like and you know and Chris is doing fart jokes like you missed each other, right? And, and see, but that's actually, why we can do it because we 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 do our, we are in sync like that. And that's the thing is we're not even in the same room doing the shit. We're gonna I'll take down the wall. Yeah. Um, we haven't been in the same room for any of our episodes yet, and now we're just kind of getting to that no, point we, we where do, we were in the same room for a morning show once. Right. A we, morning show, which I was a guest on. Yeah, but. I, I do a small morning show in the mornings on this app called Spreaker. Um, yeah, 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 I call every 8.30 uh, live the fucking Red Phillip morning uh, yeah. omelet show. Right. <laughs> Whatever the well, hell you call your dude. We, we've done that, but most of the time we're, we're like, it's like a phone conversation, you know? And um, and we do we do wind up staying in sync, I guess. Um, but it, it's difficult, you know? I want to ask Mark a question. Here's the thing. So you must have seen, because I've heard of this shit before, and we, and, and, uh, uh, in Toronto and North York, I mean, we're in, in in London, where we're from. We're fortunate because they actually have a comedy radio station. Right. Where you can hear. I mean, it's unfortunate. It's fucking censored. But I fucking heard the other day when I was listening to, because that's what I listen to when I drive around. Two guys on the stage doing stand up together. What the fuck was that like? Because remember we were saying about how if one of us is shitty, the other guy can you know bail us out as long as we're in sync. Have you ever like what is this? What do you like? That's got to be for you, like, not a disrespect, but almost like they're cheating. Because no, no, no. No, no, no. Because one thing you guys have that we don't have to worry about is, like, so one thing that we have to worry about is you've got to carry, you've got to set the uh, example for the audience. Okay, <laughs> this is going to be heavy-handed humor. All right, this is going to be ridiculous madcap shit, you know? Yeah. One thing that you guys get to have Oh, but that's more difficult is you have a conversation and you have to have a conversation with each other. And I find that it's incredibly difficult. And I've done a couple of radio shows with some friends before. You have no feedback from the audience. No, no, no. Cause we don't have, we don't hear if they're laughing at what we say or not. You uh, have we, no we, idea. We, when you're a comedian, if shit is hitting that, you know it immediately. You can switch. You can right. switch. You There's a feeling. There's a yeah. feeling in the room for a comedian, whereas the feeling that we only have is really we have to judge each other and make sure that he's right. funny, I'm funny, and you know I I got the little um you know this little uh, that uh, <laughs> but uh, that's pretty much all we've got you know what I mean just a couple little effects right. and Shit. I, 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 are judging each other. I thought that was outside, man, because my window's open. <laughs> <laughs> I, we have a fucking audience. Red, close, your, red, close your windows. What's wrong with you? The, <laughs> no, you know what actually a good analogy is that I just thought of here? Like when you're doing stand-up, it's like cooking. Like you're making a stew or a soup. You can adjust as the soup goes on. Any more salt, any more pepper. What you guys do is you bake. 
you put together the you put all the ingredients in the pot and then you let it go and you hope that that bread works. I like I hope that. That oven doesn't fuck up. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so we're bakers then. All right, so Mark, I, so, I got a, so I got a question. You're a chef, then you don't want fucking people that like bake fucking bread to tell you how to make your fucking. You don't. You don't want people. No, 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 no. I don't want anyone to. Everyone has a right to say to, <laughs> to have any opinion about anything. I think right, as far well, I think if we're talking you baking, got steamed vegetables. We got bread. Mm -hmm, we're right. Bitching. If we're talking baking and cooking, um. Well, I guess it's a baking analogy, but I mean, it, as a comedian, you don't want people throwing raisins in the fucking in the in the cake. No, you. Um, know I I had a buddy, and he had a, uh, he was a he was like a chef or something. He made a wasabi chocolate cake. It was chocolate cake. What? Wasabi. It doesn't make any sense, right? It yeah. sounds terrible. Right. It was awesome. It was awesome. The fuck? Now, if I tried to make that cake, like I would probably burn. And it like, would be I disgusting. Would, it would be disgusting. Like, and it would burn on the way out, too. Like, that's how bad it would be if I tried yeah, to make it. Phillip. You don't know his cooking skills. He's fucking <laughs> asshole. He's telling us that he sucks at it. And he might no, be no. the cordon bleu, and he's just trying to fucking Listen, be... I've burned you know, cereal. I have burned cereal. That's, that's how very about. difficult. Like, uh... But but like it's like that. Wait, like, what the fuck were you cooking cereal? What the fuck was that? Yeah, uh, let, let's it? pause for a second and answer that. <laughs> but I have not always drank high quality alcohol like I am right now with a crumb. Oh, okay. Uh, gotcha. All right, so go. Uh, so what you're saying is, uh, as far as the rape jokes, it's it's like uh, it's you doing the wasabi right. Uh, cake. It, you've really got to have a point, and here's and here's why. It's because rape jokes, race jokes. Stuff like that. What it immediately does when you when you're when you're doing stand up, right? Or you're doing comedy of any kind. What right. you want is you want your audience to get into that haze where they don't realize time is passing, and then your set's done. Whether it's a five minute set yeah. or an hour long set, it's you're, over, and you're like, oh, you're put, I don't yeah. want it to be over. The, you're uh, you're putting them in the matrix. Right. Right. Okay. So, so um, what happens is when you do a joke like that, anyone. Ha you know, part of the audience. I won't get. I won't hazard to guess what percentage, because you were right about that, Chris. Like, I, I don't know what percentage, but some percentage of the audience will be jolted out of that haze to ask, "Where is he going with this? Or where is she going with this?" Right. So, and, so from a from a performer's standpoint, you want to keep as many people in that as possible. Um, so, and when you challenge them, venturing like, out is is difficult, and it, yeah. it better be good. And it's okay to do it. But, like, if you're going to, like, you better have, you guys watch Game of Thrones? Yeah, definitely, yeah. all the time. Yeah, if you're going to venture north of the wall, you better bring a lot of rangers with you. Like, a you And a huge-ass sword. You better have a huge-ass sword, and it yeah. better kill. Yeah. Um, like, okay, so, all right, uh, so the question is, is, all right, it, it goes bad. It takes them out of that. Now, the consequence <laughs> is them leaving, is it not? Right? Uh, if it, if it's bad enough, I mean, like, what is your? Leave, guess, but the, th the weird thing with audience members is, uh, if someone is visibly upset, or visibly shaken, or looks even unhappy, the rest of the audience can see it. And if there's enough of them, it kind of dominoes. Even if they shouldn't be, all right. Even if they shouldn't be upset, all it takes is a couple, and it dominoes out. I so, fucking hate that. That's because people. Uh... No, but, no, you're right. But, but isn't, no isn't like, 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 <laughs> people who are super offended, people who are easily offended, and hecklers, they're the same kind of person. Not they act differently, but what you you gotta see that, and like you're making soup, right? Oh, I broke an egg, or oh, this is a bad egg. You immediately gotta improvise, and you gotta adjust, and it's harder to improvise like the further it goes in. Like I, uh, um, um, uh, what's, what's a good analogy? I can marry you. You screw my analogy. Fucking it, analogies, god damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like that episode of Star Trek. Being like Delorean at Canagra. Deloreans. Like, <laughs> damn. You got that one. You got but, that. But um. Oh, I came up listen. with a Delorean. Well, whatever. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. All right. I, oh, here's the thing. Is is. Part of being a comedian is it not having bad sets because, again, like I said, it, it's trying those things. He is yeah. the actual. Yeah. But you know who's great? Like there are comedians out there, and I'm I'm not one of them yet. 
But there's comedians out there, and they can take bad material and still make the audience laugh. Like, there's guys out there that can tell a joke that fails, and it doesn't feel like it fails. Right. Like, uh, okay. But the but the regular comedian, you know what I mean? He's got to go out there, and he's got to try shit, and it's got to bomb. No, no, and I think that's okay. Again, I'm not telling you – I'm not telling you – don't try stuff. Well, see, that's what I'm. That's what I'm wondering. Is is kind of what you, what your point is? Is you're like you're saying it's okay to try it and go out there and. Okay, um, wait, wait. We, we I want to interrupt this. I want to interrupt this. I want to interrupt. This. All right. Well, Mark, right, do you ahead. find rape jokes funny? I don't. Okay. Any? See, that's an opinion, and that's fine. But here's the thing: is what I just want to just so we're all clear on the same thing. You don't find them funny. I mean, but, I found, not really. No. Okay, see, oh, okay. See, now you are fucking. Is it? Is it? Is it? No, or is it not really? Because not well, really means it thing. could be funny. You know, the rape. Here's I. You want to hear my rules about rape jokes? Yes. And I have. I have. I. I actually have sets that I only do at open mics, and they're about this. That if you're gonna do a joke like that, like a rape joke, you've got to be the one being raped. Okay. That works. I mean that's it. That's a that's a, that's your rule though. Um, we're no, talking... no, it's just my rule. I'm not telling anyone else. Should, I'm not telling anyone else. Okay, but see, that's what we're talking about, and that's what the whole Lindy West thing was. Is she's trying to get it pretty much banned completely, trying to get it out, gone, and which but means it's... you couldn't even make a rape joke about yourself. Right. That's her it, idea. That's it, her it, fucking myopic world that this person's the word, down her the head. The word rape disappears, but. Rape can be funny. It's actually possible. It, well, like, it, it can be, but here's the reason why it's very it's very tough. And and I'll give you a little bit of background why it's a little bit harder for me. And again, everyone else can feel how they feel. But I spent five years as oh, a shit. I spent five years as a, a domestic violence attorney here in town. Okay. Uh, and so if you meet people who have been raped, then it is very difficult. To separate that, and I'm gonna, that, and that's understandable. That's understandable. Yeah. But and you what, would, you would never even. I, I, I can tell that you, as a guy, you would never even get angry at a comedian for doing that joke. You know what I mean? Once a comedian comes off say, the stage, I can tell as a guy you'd never rape someone. I, yeah. well, I mean, that would be a, fu- <laughs> that would be a funny joke. Right, so like, I can so tell as a guy, well, you would hold worry, me tight. You, <laughs> would hold you would let me be the big spoon. Yeah, that's what um, you. Would <laughs> but what See, I'm saying that was is, a funny rape joke right there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that was consensual, motherfucker. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a magical night. It was a magical night with Red and I. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Um. Uh. All right. You gotta so, shave, bro. Like it. That. That stuff burns. <laughs> I already did. It's gone. Um. <laughs> j- just to please you. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here, here's the thing: is, is I, I couldn't see you getting angry at a comedian. You know, once that comedian comes off the stage after he's done his rape joke, I couldn't even see you getting angry at it. But I, I, I even though you're uncomfortable with it, you don't like it, but you're not going to get angry. Like you're not even going to get angry at him, right? Right. All right. So what, what we were arguing, what like the whole thing wound up being is, I, I mean, I hate rape. Rape is ridiculously horrible. It, it doesn't, like, it's... it's and that's uh, what Mark it, would never do. We just talked about <laughs> that, so why are you worrying? Right? It, it's unfathomable. So, <laughs> I, I just wanted to clear that because uh, funny is funny, and it, it, like, it can be funny if, like you said, you you keep them in that matrix. Right. Like, they, they all of a sudden, they're like, wow, he made a great point about it, and he put a good spin on it, and he put he made me see it in a different point of view. You know what I mean? Right. And like um, now the one thing I like is what I say is I mean if you have been raped or you know you know someone that's been raped whatever um, you you either you like to rape you either don't go into an artistic um, environment like a movie theater or comedy uh, club uh, because you know like you need to know. That that shit is possible. To it, it could easily happen. It, and, it is, and I'll tell you this: if you're but, someone who's sensitive about that, you shouldn't go to like an open mic because right. these are new-ish or you old should comedians. check out the material. Well, if you I, can't I think the I think you're gonna fucking see. So then you're not worried. But, think, but it's like this: like, uh, all right, so you guys, so in in Minnesota, right? In Minnesota, there's a pretty big Hmong community. Okay. There. And I mean, what? Uh, 
Come Hmong. On. It's, it's like a southeastern Asian ethnic group. I don't know, you know. You never seen Gran Torino? Oh, that's right, Gran Torino. That's right. Oh, that's... I was asking Chris. Uh, yeah, Gran Torino. Hey, wasn't that, wasn't that, weren't they Koreans in that movie? No, those are Hmongs. Months, yeah. What the yeah. fuck is that? There's a new kind of Asian that I'm not aware no, of. No, man, they're from uh they're shit. They're like inside. They're like they're like Starburst. They're like, like Mount. Do the Starburst like... Asians, and inside there's like the orange Asian. Wait, what the fuck? Whoa, 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 They're from the mountains. Star- what do you mean Starburst Asians? You're blowing my mind here. The 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 Hmongs are from the mountains. Are are they not? Yeah. Right. Oh, so okay, they're... so they're just they're just just a, they're, 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 they're like wait. what Tibet they're... people are. Tibetans right. kind of. Right. Right. They're they're right, minority so, group. Go and on, Mark. So the, the so the point of this, uh, man. Now I'm talking about Gran Torino. No, the, <laughs> the point of this, the point is, is like you know they uh, so they have been ethnically cleansed. Like that's why there's so many in uh, in the West now, in North America. What does that mean? What does ethnic uh, ethnically cleansed Genocide, mean? Genocide, so motherfucker. So they were uh, so they were uh, mar- marginalized and uh, abused by the governments in areas that they've lived. What uh, fucking country is this? Like, there's, like, like, I'm tr- Hmong. I can't like. Hmong, they're like, uh, they're like. Uh, let's see, let's see. There, there's at least some in. We're gonna wiki this. We're gonna wiki this crap right now. <laughs> uh, they they live in China, Vietnam, Laos, and Thailand. Okay, okay. So they're just they're just kind of like a just a group of. Uh, they're, uh, group of they're, they're they're just like they don't have their own country. That's what I was wondering. Right, you right, said Hmong. I'm country. like, I've never heard of any country called Hmong. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so they've been ethnically cleansed from some places, like in, uh, you ever, ever see, like, um, the Killing Fields or any of those movies? Like, these are groups that get really hosed. So, you can, like, if you do, uh, like, uh, a, a, you can do a joke about, uh, I'm gonna kill all blah, 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 uh, but if you do it in front of, like, and you don't realize that there's all these Hmong in the room, like you may lose the audience. Like they may tighten course, right up. Of course. I mean, uh, like there's always a uh, possibility of bad sets, and there's there's no like there's no debate about that. Um, you know, unfortunately, we kind of got to wrap this up. Uh, we're getting to about an hour here. Um, sure. But uh, the the whole debate uh, that we were trying to like. This is why I want to have you on. We didn't really understand what you were saying. This is really been good to talk to you about it because we we see what you're saying. Um, you, you you have feelings about it, obviously. You know what I mean, because you uh, you you dealt with that. But um, what the debate really, what it came down to was, all right, I can make these jokes, and even if they're good, even if they're funny to a lot of people, if they're not funny to you, that's absolutely okay, and you're absolutely um, allowed to walk out. You're allowed to but, say but, whatever the fuck you want about you. you but can't you say- can't. That that wasn't funny. It, you can only no, say because no, 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 funny no. is not subjective. Yeah. If great, one person great, great. finds something Listen. funny, he's funny. Listen, but here's the thing. You're right. It is funny, but you, I mean, you right. said yourself the other uh, last episode. You said um, Jerry Seinfeld isn't funny to you. All right, but it, it's funny to other people. So no, 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 you no, no, agree no, no, that no. Jerry Seinfeld I, I, is funny. I, right? I, I just thought I said. I said I don't like his kind of right. funny. But right. I'm not but, saying. But you agree he's that he's funny. funny. But you agree that he's funny. Uh, I will so, take, I think I'll he say this. Funny. He's in, he's he is funny. I, I just don't I'm, like it. Right, I'm not right. gonna. I don't speak on behalf of all funny. I right. represent funny. Well, I but I can, you can I never agree. say something's not funny just because you didn't like it. If I don't like right. it, that's me. Okay, but, but here, funny. listen. But, let me make my, let me make my point. The point was with the Lindy West thing is that what she and many people do is once they walk out of that comedy club because they didn't like that because they didn't like that right. they all of a sudden are suing for money now this like recently someone actually just got sued and they the the sewers won because they didn't like his jokes and people band together and make this person lose their careers because they didn't like what he said and i we don't think that's right and that's what we're fighting for. Well, I agree with I, I agree with you guys there because I think we all screw up. Like you know, there's a line from like that Avenue Q musical, like everybody's a little bit racist. Like we right. all like we all go through this learning process. We're like, man, I shouldn't do you know handicap jokes, you know, in the middle of a Special Olympics. Like you know what I mean? Like you learn stuff that you shouldn't. But wouldn't do. that mean you're handicapping your act? And why would they want you to feel like that? Look, what I'm saying I, is I don't need the crutches. 
<laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, but see, right. I agree. He, I and I actually, I think, I you think see, you're you right. See what, no, you I, see what Mark just did there? Mark, Mark just saved my bomb. Yeah. He, he like took my grenade that I dropped on the ground and he threw it at the enemy and blew them up. I was like, <laughs> I got you, Chris. <laughs> that's right. Um, lover. Uh, and see, Mark, that's why, uh, for one, you have an interesting point of view on things, and for two, you're a, you seem to be a really funny guy. Um, yes. Unfortunately, we got to get out of here, uh, but uh, I'd like you to plug whatever you want to plug. This will be up on uh, Sunday, so think in those terms. Mark, um, Mark, you gotta come on our show on Sunday. Definitely come back on, man. You should come yeah, back any, on. Um, you guys are awesome. I love doing your show. Maybe, maybe next <laughs> week. Maybe next week. Hey, yeah, maybe we can actually get to Mark's fucking intro this time. Listen, I just want to talk you this weekend. Miley Cyrus is twerking versus a fucking gorilla that's fighting a giant giraffe. I took right. my wife to uh, to Michigan for the first time this weekend. She'd never had Tim Hortons before. Jesus. She got Tim Hortons, and we got a big-ass pile of Tim bits. So oh. now I think I can convince her to go to Toronto now that she has been prepped. Hey, having, if, uh, if you're ever in town, let us know. This would be It would be great to meet you, man. Yeah, man. Chris, um, Red. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What, what do you got? You doing a show? Um, you doing? What do I got? I got after, uh, after Sunday. I got, I got uh, the Asian Comedy Festival on uh, October second. I think at Zany's here in Chicago. Okay. A, Anything in else? Chicago land area. If you're in the yeah. Chicago land area, go uh, see Mark. He's funny. Fuck. You've heard him what? here. He, he, I, I say this. He, he is quick. You know, he is quick. That's good shit. Good he shit. He came up with the crutch drug. I, I didn't think like, <laughs> he would come up with something that quick, but he, he, he came with it. He, he, I don't know if he was thinking about it, but he definitely came with it. So. It is the Queen's Crown Royale. It is the Queen's Crown Royale. Right. Um, okay, so uh, that's that's Mark. Um, you know, I want everybody. I want to thank everybody for listening to us. Um, check us out on YouTube, YouTube.com/slash The Red Phillips Show. Uh, like us on Facebook, Facebook.com/slash The Red Phillips Show, and uh, follow us on Twitter, Twitter.com/slash The Red Phil. T H E E R E D P H I L. You know, that didn't even feel like an hour. I think uh, we no, tried to because I went like by an hour. very fucking fast. Um, I, I had fun. What's that? The Matrix. Yeah, the Matrix, man. It like it, and it's um, it's all about having fun. All about making it fly by. And hopefully, the listeners had had fun listening to us, because you know, the, all five of them. Um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, thanks for listening, everybody. Peace.